Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. Just got a fun little video about this article to show you from the New Republic called uh, The Last of the Ayn Rand Acolytes. This year's Objectivist Conference revealed that her cult of hypercapitalism has a major recruiting problem. All the young people want to be socialists. So just the opposite of the video that I did earlier today saying that everybody believes in capitalism and freedom now. Socialism so dead, the Democratic Party is small and shrinking. The opposite of what I said earlier today. Now, at one point he says that there were mostly old people there, but then after a couple of hours the young people started showing up again. So that, that dig failed, there were young people around. But here's, you know, it was, it's just a garbage thing. Was, maybe I could show you this one thing he says, uh, he says, I snuck in by, what was his disguise? His disguise was a pin that said, I love fossil fuels, and an Ayn Rand Institute duffel bag. So with that disguise, he was able to sneak in. So that tells you uh, where he was sneaking into and what kind of guy he is to put those things on to sneak around. Not wear them proudly. Okay, so he's just a common leftist guy. Comes into this... Ayn Rand thing. He listens to a talk by Epstein. And Epstein made an interesting point that I want to point out a little bit here. Epstein's talk drove home, quoting now, the, Epstein's talk, talk drove home the perverse incentives the objectivist dogma offers to on-the-make intellectuals. Selling out to the highest bidder is not merely condoned, it is deemed a positive moral virtue. Because Epstein said, um, somebody said, you're being paid by the oil companies to say what you're saying. How do we know that you're being honest? Now that's, I mean, that's just a standard idea today, right? If somebody's paying you, then you're not, you're not being honest, or you're not, we don't know how honest you are. If you're saying it without being paid, then we know, blah, blah, blah. You know the, the common argument right? It seems pretty pretty easy to uh, to get around. Or it seems pretty hard to get around. That it seems pretty easy to, to ask it of Epstein. Epstein says it doesn't matter if I really believe my own advocacy. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. What matters is the belief in the sanctity of the transaction. Now, I don't think that is I think that that's the garbage that he had to throw in there. So just take that sentence out. And everything else in this paragraph is fine. Okay? And then somebody thought that was very interesting. He murmured that it was very interesting, as though he had to keep it secret. So let's talk about what, what happened before that bit of the disaster there. What matters is the belief in the sanctity of the transaction. Oi, polloi, no. Epstein's point is that if he is talking about how good fossil fuels are and you listen to his speech and you say uh, he's right, the fossil fuels are good and then you, you get his points and you believe it and you go home and you think about it and you do your own research and you're right, yeah, everything's made out of oil, fossil fuels are good and so on and then you find out the oil companies were paying him and then you find out that he himself didn't even believe it. He himself did not believe the stuff that he was telling you. You find out that Epstein's actually an environmentalist who doesn't actually own any oil stock. He owns stock in uh, Greenpeace or whatever. Okay? Epstein's point was that wouldn't even matter. Because the ideas that he's spreading are, are what matter. And if the ideas are true and based on logic and evidence, then it doesn't matter whether Epstein believes them or not. It doesn't matter who believes them. If, you, if he's spreading these ideas, it's the truth of the ideas that make them spread. It doesn't matter who he's taking money from. Judge the ideas on their merits. Um, it, it, is, it, is, it does not change the truthhood of your claim depending on who's funding your claim. Not necessarily, right? Uh, but more to the point, more to the point, 
somebody who's saying something can have an effect even if they don't really believe those ideas. Someone who is saying something can have an effect whether or not they believe the ideas. So if someone is just being a mouthpiece for bad ideas and you ask them, you say, well, what's going on there? They say, oh, you know, this is just what I believe. <laughs> just saying what I believe. You know, I'm not, I, I haven't really thought about it that much. It's just, uh, well, that can have serious consequences. As evidenced by the fact that, that Epstein's pointing out here, that it doesn't really matter whether he believes, like, let's say he is an environmentalist. Let's say he doesn't believe that... Uh, oil is good, that fossil fuels are good. He's the, he's the I love fossil fuels guy. Let's say he doesn't believe fossil fuels are good. And he's spreading a belief in fossil fuels and he might lead to a future where people believe fossil fuels are good. So it doesn't really matter what his beliefs are. So when you say, uh, we don't know if we can trust your beliefs, Alex, because you're being paid. Now you're two steps removed from the question. It doesn't matter what his beliefs are. That doesn't matter one way or the other. And he's being paid. Now you're two steps out of the subject. You needed to stop on the first one. It just doesn't matter what his beliefs are. Listen to his case. Listen to his evidence. But what, what does beliefs matter at all? He presents an argument. Look at his argument. Why would you step back one step further and say, well, I heard he goes to church on Sunday. Well, yeah, but what about his argument? That's what we're talking about. His argument is fossil fuels are good. And you say, well, we don't know if you believe that, Alex. How do, how do we even know you even believe that fossil fuels are good? Maybe you're just taking money. You see? And he's saying, well, forget about the money. Let's go back to the first one. How do we know that I even believe it? He's saying, we don't have to know that I believe it. It doesn't matter whether or, whether or not I believe it. I might not believe it. I'm still spreading the ideas. Same goes for leftists. Same goes for communists. They're out there handing out pamphlets or whatever. They may or may not believe the communist garbage, but they are still spreading bad ideas. People in a church pew spreading communism or whatever, they, don't, they may not even believe the stuff they're saying, but they are still spreading bad ideas. Okay? Alex Epstein may or may not believe what he's saying, but he's still spreading good ideas. <laughs> Hippie noodle blown. There you go. There's your thought of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please patronize me, support me if you support what I'm doing. I lost a Patreon recently, a $5 a month Patreon in the scandals, I guess. So, um, I need someone to help replace him. I also did get a couple of pages. I lost one and got two. If that math continues, that's okay, I guess. Um, but please jump on and help me out and let's try to get uh, let's try to get this message out there. Whatever whatever my message is. You guys support me with the message that I bring. Now I don't have a systematic, systemized message. I'm just doing what I when I wake up in the morning and get on the computer and say, today's now what you know, that's what happens. So Yesterday was a takedown of Euron Brook. That's tough. I thought he left the Ayn Rand Institute or whatever, but he's still the chairman over there. So now I've done a video talking about how the chairman of the Ayn Rand Institute's wrong in his views on X, Y, and Z. That's putting Mr. Cropper on thin ice as an objectivist, isn't it? And Mr. Cropper's not leaving the objectivist camp. So you guys get comfy with me. And please patronize me if you support what I'm doing.